NRLW officially underway. Straight through. Brenda. Intercept. Solid defense. Oh, great tackle. The skipper is in. Oh, bang. Ruan Sim. I look past to Atsu is going to crash over. Now, straight through they go through Uber Pili. Wow. And the Broncos celebrate success once more. Hello and welcome to the NRL Grand NRLW Grand Final Show. My name is Danica Mace and alongside me, Alana Ferguson and Ruan Sims. Good to see you both. Hey, Danica. You too. Now, what a weekend it was. The big grand final this weekend and we got a bit of a taste of it on the weekend just gone. Really exciting couple of games we saw. Alana, what were your top three moments? Yeah, very exciting. I had to start... Uh, my number three, sorry, is one of our Roosters players, Corbin McGregor with a sensational intercept try. Now, Corbs puts a lot of time into her sprint training and it definitely paid off. The timing and the read of that intercept, she performed perfectly, but to see her just stretch out and to really make that 90-metre effort and turn it into a try was incredible. She more than deserved the points for that. And I love the little touch at the end with the double shackers. How good is that? Uh, number two... From the Broncos, Meg Ward, now she kicks their conversions. She kicked four from four on the weekend and a couple from out wider too, which was really impressive. Something that goes a long way, especially heading into this grand final. Her completion rate, the conversion rate's over 90%. So that's really exceptional. Look at this one. And a huge asset for the Broncos heading in. We know that, that they nicely. can score points, but mm. for a player to be able to kick goals like that is enormous. And then number one, the Warriors, with, this is their harker that they performed before the game, but I just thought it highlighted perfectly to the unity within the Warriors team. They had an incredible week in the lead up to this game. Only five of the original Warriors women there and the rest of the women, they learnt that new haka and they just really embraced one another's cultures during the week. And I thought the performance that they displayed on the footy field was by far their best. They sh showed huge improvements and they just came together so perfectly as a team. So it was just really lovely for me to see that play out and they really deserve to win that match. Yeah, certainly so many sacrifices from the Warriors players. Now, Ruan, who made your team of the week? Well, we're going to have a look at the team of the week now. And there were a few, I think people will probably look at it as surprising omissions, but there were some really difficult choices this week. So Tamika Upton was fantastic. Meg Ward, we just spoke about, not just for her goal kicking, but she also got a try as well. And she just, she played really well on the weekend. Elia Green, of course, outstanding. <laughs> the centres, Chantel Stowers and Ivania Palite were wonderful for the Warriors. So that's why they made my centre pairing. Corbin McGregor and Taryn Aiken as the halves. I don't think anybody will have an issue with those no, two you, being selected. You can't ignore those the, the two. The one that I was a bit worried about, well, not worried, but Mel Howard had a great game for the Roosters. I thought she really stepped up to the mark. Georgia Hale. Now, people will be saying, why did you pick her at nine when she had 13 on her back? She was named at 13, but she played in that hooking role throughout the whole game, and she was wonderful for the Warriors. Crystal Tamarua was huge, as was Chelsea, Chelsea Lenarduzzi off the bench for the Broncos. Was She's so solid, really, isn't really she? good. And the thing is, that she didn't have the same metres that a lot of the other front rowers, but I felt when she came on, she made a difference. So that's why she made my starting team. Shania Power, again, off the bench for the Warriors was great. Young Tale Holmes was very strong on the edge for the, the Dragons as well. And Ali Brigginshaw at lock was wonderful through the middle again for the second week in a row. And who was your player of the week? My player of the week was Ivania. I thought she was fantastic. In particular, this movement we're watching now, that's off a set-piece scrum. The two sevens players were just stood with the entire half of the field and came off that the Dragons had numbered up. They had enough people there to shut it down, but they were just too good. And then, of course, she gets over for her own try. But not just that. The work she did in yardage was really strong as well. Her defence is wonderful. And that left edge combination that they have there for the Warriors is wonderful. And if they can keep them, that going for next I thought, year, I think it would be really good. I thought the way that Brad Donald coached that side and, and gave them a little bit... Well, he, he gave them the ability to use that left edge Rue, you spoke about how they were numbered up in defence and the defenders were there. They had, they should have been stopped, but why Varney and Elia are so dangerous is because they are used to playing sevens and they're used to having those one-on-one -on -one competitions constantly. That's their game. That's what mm. they've been uh, like raised. It's what's been drilled into mm. them to really take those players one-on-one -on -one and beat them. And that's why they're so brilliant. They're yeah. used to that combination. They're used to having all of that space 
and basically make the defenders look like fools but and just see, beat them, the whether it be on the inside the, or the, the outside. The thing was, though, Alana, they didn't have space. They created, created space. So I didn't say they numbered up. I said they had the numbers. So what they had, they had a 50-50 split. When you have a 50-50 split, you have the same number of defenders on each side, regardless of what the attack has, because you need to cover all of your bases. Those two were just so good that it didn't matter that the Dragons had the right numbers there and enough numbers there to shut down the space. They were just too good. It's too strong in the one-on-one -on -one contacts that you spoke about. Absolutely fantastic. I love that left edge. Yeah, now, unfortunately for the Dragons, they were handed the wooden spoon. They really struggled with injury this season, but they finished in really strange circumstances through... They had just 16 players in this last match. Yeah, I was really surprised they travelled with 16 on the day. Uh, we spoke about this, Alana, and they had a number of players who were available for selection that weren't injured. Uh, so I was surprised that Daniel Lacey travelled up with just 16 because it made life very difficult for them from on, on the get-go. So, And the Warriors just took advantage of it. I mean, it was... I was so proud of what the Warriors put out there on the park. Yep. I think they deserved that win. They worked hard for it all season. They'd been up against it. But the Dragons, a star studied year, and I think they would have had the expectation to come in and win. And I had originally, when I saw their team list before a minute of football was played, I'd tipped them to be in the grand final this weekend mm. because of the stars that they had within their side. But for whatever reason, it didn't gel this year. And I've been there and I know what it's like. So. As a club, you just got to go back. You got to go back to the drawing board. You need to break things down, get back to your basics, work on that, and build off the back. Well, of a it. similar thing happened when you like, when you were playing for the Roosters. What gets spoken about? Because it's such a short time. The, the women come together only a couple of weeks before the competition. There's potentially only three, maybe four, if they make the grand final to come together. What do you talk about during the week? Is it too short? It is too short. Mm. It is, and we've spoken about this at length. It is too short. The game itself is too short. Sixty minutes is not enough time to wrestle back any kind of control it goes so so quickly and especially when you've got middle forwards that can roll through 15 minutes so if you've got a 15 minute set for a middle forward you can throw out your best 15 minutes have a rest come back out and do it again when the season is only you play each other once there's not enough time to make adjustments it's just if you can get on the front foot and keep the role going you'll get there in the end now we saw Sam Bremner return uh, to footy this season after she had a son do you think we'll see her again back next year? She's only 28 still. Yeah, I think we will see Sammy, Bra Sammy back. I think the only thing that would stop Sam would be <laughs> falling pregnant again, to be honest. She's a very competitive person and late 20s is, is when you're at your best. She's in her prime. Definitely having kids doesn't make you any weaker. I've actually got plenty of friends that have come back into different sports and they've said that having a baby actually somehow even physically they feel stronger, whether that's just redirecting all of your energy and your emphasis on that training. But I think the only thing that will stop Sammy playing footy in the next two to three years would, would be to be pregnant again. Now, we did see a couple of standouts for the Warriors this season as well. Elia Green and Ivania Polite, they really impressed this season. Rue, do you think if they didn't have those two in the team that the Warriors could have been handed the wooden spoon? I don't know. I don't, I don't believe so. I think that they, what the Warriors did was worked with what they had. So I wouldn't want to surmise on what ifs and coulds because we don't know. All we know is what happened throughout the year. And Brad Donald managed to secure the services of these two incredible athletes. Uh, the Roosters uh, secured... Charlotte Kaslick, uh, the Dragons secured Mahalia Murphy, also Grace Hamilton came across, Yasmin Meeks came across. So it's not just these two athletes that made a difference for their sides. I think all of the Sevens girls and Rugby Union girls that came across made a huge difference. So I'm just, I was just glad to see them, to be honest. Glad to see them playing Rugby League because they're so talented. Do you think we'll see them in Origin? I'd like to, and I've made no bones in saying that I would love to see them in Origin. I've even tried to bribe Elia Green <laughs> on air, national television. I don't think it's her, I don't think it's her me, decision. Turn me down, but no, no, I'll have a chat with John Menenti. He used, he used to coach me for uh, Rugby Union 15, so I'll have a chat with the Italian Stallion, see, what, see what we can come up with. But I would love to see them. I'd love to see them playing on that stage in that arena because we saw what they can do at this level. Imagine them in another step up. Well, they've raised the quality of our game already and it's... Oh, origins that next step again so we can only imagine what level they actually take our game to it's exciting to think now we also had the Dally M's this week Ali Brigginshaw she took it out were you surprised by this or was she just a not at absolute all. front runner not at all she deserves the Dally M over and over again she's such an incredible footy player I think the way that Ali's actually played this year she's taken the game to another level again which is so impressive to watch she's 
whether she's named at seven, we can see seven on her back there, and then she's also been named in lock. What the ball playing role that Ali's actually playing is, she's just controlling that middle field of that middle third of the game. So she's ball playing, and then they've got a, she's got a half, half either side of her, but she controls the game so well. Their field position, the Broncos' field position, um, is always crucial, and she has her hand in that and just finishes those points. Tamika Upton, you can see with the footy, she's brilliant. She brings those strike weapons in so perfectly, and when she needs to, Ali takes the line on as well. So I think Ali is up there with the best footy player that I've ever seen, a female footy player, and also just the fact that she's taken her game to the next level and she continues to build and add things to her repertoire. Um, she absolutely deserves it this year. Rue, she was what, incredible. What about tackle of the year? Mm. Southwell. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to watch this I highlight reckon, over honestly, and over I again. Reckon all of her tackles this year could have been the tackle of the year. She's so a free She's K. such a strong defender. I love watching her defend. Again, another player who's come from a rugby union background and that is a pure rugby league tackle, up yep. and under. The technique Get of that in there, is get in tight. On. And look, the head's in tight. I had a coach that said cheek to cheek. So that was your tackle tech. We put your cheek on their butt cheek. Nice and soft landing. <laughs> cheek to cheek. And she's just, she does it perfectly. She executes it really well. And um, however, I also think there's another contender that was maybe a little bit, you know, sad to, to see it be unrewarded. But this tackle by Elia Green on Jess this Sergis. One, this one has got to be on the highlights reel. This is definitely on the highlight reel. It is... Difficult to knock over Jess Sergis. She Absolutely. is such a strong body. And look, she bounces up beautifully, gets up, plays the ball. I've been hammered in a big tackle, and you actually get up quicker when you get hammered in a You've big tackle. You've got a point to prove, it. don't you? Yeah. I loved watching I loved these it. two because they were just smiling. Like they'd get up, they'd yeah. look at one another. You could tell On the they sideline, they're just, just smiling it. at each other. Yeah, like yeah. they loved the competition. I thought it was brilliant watching the two of them go head to head. Now, uh, the league was supposed to expand this year, but obviously, because of the COVID situation, it wasn't able to. But as they look to expand in the future, what teams do you think could or should be there? Well, it's interesting. I think the strength of the NRLW comes from the competitions that are run in New South Wales and in Queensland. And those competitions um, are certainly getting strengthened. So I think... I don't necessarily think the club itself... Um, matters too much, but I think it's really important to get one um, to add a, a New South Wales side and a Queensland side. What do you think, Rue, about the specific clubs? Well, my understanding of the way they want to grow the footprint of the game is that they want to ensure that it is a national league, not just Sydney yep. and Queensland based. So, my understanding would be that it would be either a team from Melbourne, Canberra, a Western Sydney side, or another Queensland side. Or Newcastle. So they're looking to really drive that footprint and expand as much as possible by capturing a bigger audience. So mm. if you get a team from those different areas, then you're obviously growing your base. Mm. So, you know, whilst we are strong in New South Wales and Queensland, Central Queensland... Do you think we have the strength elsewhere from those competitions next year? I think we make it. We see what they did with the Warriors this year. You make it strong. They can drag, play, drag players in from New South Wales, but then you're branded as a Melbourne Storm side or you're branded as a Canberra Raiders how do you, side. How do you get a player from New South Wales or from somewhere to, to go to Melbourne or to go to Canberra without the money, though, for, that, for those competitions? There's money there. There will be money there. If they want to do it, there'll be money there. Definitely. And the fact be. that it is such a short season, it's not as if they're going for the entirety of the NRL season. And the Warriors girls, they did it this year. They exactly. moved to Australia. If, yep. you, if, you, if you want if to, you want to chase if that's it, you your can. dream. And like, there are a lot of moving parts to this. I'm not saying it's as easy as drop a team in Melbourne, drop a team in Canberra, drop a team in Queensland. It's not as easy as that. Hmm. But my understanding of what they want to do to grow the game is they want to ensure that it's a national league, not just Sydney-based teams, the way... Like, not just heavily Sydney-based teams. So I'd love to see a Western Sydney side. I think there is enough talent out there and deserves a team out at Western Sydney. But also, Canberra deserve a side, Newcastle. I think Newcastle's a great idea because um, that does yeah. capture a, a bigger market. A bigger market. Yeah. Absolutely. So I never know. I never know. Obviously, my heart would love to see a, a Cronulla Sharks team. <laughs> Me too. Would I was going to say that. And I was like, don't make thing with that is that they've got teams that are close Exactly already. right. So that's what sort of takes the impetus or the punch out of that, which, you know, they were disappointed to miss out when they, these first started in 2017. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it pans out. But, I mean, obviously, we, we haven't seen a blueprint of it. We haven't seen yeah. anything of what they want to do yet. This is just us spitballing ideas mm. and, you know, 
I would love to see more teams next year, regardless. Well, the Eels during the week, I saw some vision. They had a couple of, they had some girls trialling, you know, uh, for yeah. rugby league. Well, the thing is, they, there's a lot of Tasha Gale teams that are with mm. the New South Wales clubs as well. So that's where you're seeing a lot of young female talent come through. So they have to be able to progress somewhere. There's not enough spots. 22 spots over four teams is not enough to capture those young players coming through. We need to expand and we need to also expand the number of players that the are in those squads. The most important thing for the women's game is that we have those pathways and they've been, they've been created, the Tasha Gales, those younger kids coming through. It's all been set up in the last few years. So the longer that we continue that and keep growing it, it'll happen. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be possible to get the strength in so many different areas. Are there any other changes that you'd like to see the league bring in? In the women's game? Mm. Um, yeah, look, I've got very different viewpoints, which is no surprise between myself and Rue. But for me, I love the 30-minute halves. I think the shorter games, just so that we can get before the NRL games week in, week out, it makes it um, that little bit more feasible. And I think it's exciting to have them at the same venues before the game. I think that's really important. I also would love to take that one player off the field, open the game up a little bit more. And then my other thing, which Freddie and I have spoken about, we've spoken about um, in, one of our other, in one of our other shows as well, which I think is crucial for the women's game, is the size and the weight of the footy itself. I just think it needs to be that little bit smaller, the little bit lighter, and that will have such a huge impact on the game, passing, kicking, everything. Everything okay, that we so see when, on the when footy field, you introduce the it smaller will change. Ball. When do you introduce it? In, uh, from the start of the year, next year, in club okay, football, you won't be able to do it next year. Through. You won't be able to do it next year because there's a World Cup next year. So they won't have enough time with the ball in their hands. I think our international game... I what still, stays at 80 minutes, stays with the same I, I, size ball? I believe our, our origin and our international games stay the way they okay. are and our NRLWs stay shorter so that we can play them with the men's NRL on the same day, extend the competition, extend the amount of teams that we have and just roll it out, try to work towards yeah, a, a normal season. Yeah, but we're talking season. footy size. So when do you want to implement football size? Because well, you, the can't, so, well, the sooner the you better. can't have one football for club competition and then have a different football for origin and, and I don't, international. I think, I think club... So you have to have one. I think club and NRLW way. should be the same. I think international game is international mm. game. That's different. I think that opens up a big can of worms because then you've got a different size ball you got to learn how to use it, how it's well, different. Well, our bodies it's don't different change. in flight, it's different in weight, it's different in exactly, size and everything. So then going from that ball to then going to a regular size football for origin and international makes a really big... That's a huge difference. No, I think... It's a huge I difference. believe well, timing, the question caught me off guard, so I'm not sure when it's introduced in terms of how that inflicts on the World Cup and, and international yeah, games. Yeah, so that's my but point. But I think you end do game, it next year. Yeah, you'd okay, have to so, do it the but following end year. game, I believe that a smaller ball is much better suited regardless of any other rule for women's football. Yeah, and so, so you'd like to have it in origin and... The size yeah, of the football? Yeah, across absolutely. Everything. OK, yeah. so yeah, that was my point. Do you want to have the same size football overall? Yes, yes. but our okay. timing, I'm not entirely yeah. sure. So it'd have to be after World Cup because we don't have enough time for them to get ready for a World Cup before that. But with, when it comes to times, I think adding an extra five minutes a half is not going to stop the commercial viability when you have it on game day at NRL. I think an extra five minutes a half would be absolutely perfect. And then get a bit more fatigue, get a bit more space opening up through the middle. I think we both want that fatigue in the space. We just see the game in a different way. Yeah. Um, well, having a look ahead to this weekend, the grand final, of course, we did get a bit of a preview of it on the weekend. The Broncos winning that game. How much of a mental edge do you think that's given the Brisbane side? Well, look, they, they probably didn't... Um, the, the game could have panned out very differently. There was one try that the Roosters, it was disallowed to the Roosters and it was an incredible lead up. It would have been one of the best tries in the competition if it had worked and that would have actually put the Roosters in contention of the game within two points of the Broncos and the game could have gone either way. So I think the Broncos have always had confidence. That's been one of their strengths and they've also always been the benchmark. But I definitely can't write the Roosters out of this one. I think they've got plenty to offer. They just need to review this game and figure out how they can stop these women in the middle and the, and the ball playing options that they're creating. A lot of the women's tries as well, you'll notice, are really close to the attacking line. Corbin's obviously is a, different, is, is a different thing in itself, which we can see her running away with now. But I think what the Roosters need to do is try and figure out how to stop the Broncos from having that field position because that's when they're at their most dangerous. And because they've got so many options, they've got those three ball players and Tamika Upton, who just has a licence to run anywhere, they're really hard to stop and the Roosters haven't been able to adjust quick enough in defence. So I think for the Roosters, if they're able to slow down their defence, um, control those rucks and slow them down that little bit and try and take control of that field position, it's anyone's game. And Who, it's exciting. It is exciting. Yeah, Who's your so player exciting. to watch in the grand final? 
Well, I went a little bit differently with Taryn Aiken, not because I necessarily think that she's going to be the most outstanding player on the field, but I think what Taryn Aiken does is allows the whole Broncos attack to work at its best. And she, for me, still, including Ali Brigginshaw, actually, she, for me, still takes the line on better than anyone because the pace that she has is just lightning. She takes off, she runs 100 miles an hour and whether she's giving it out the back to Tamika Upton, whether she's linking up with Ali or any of the other players, because she takes the line on so hard, everyone else's jobs is just made so much more easier because she's a, such a threat first and foremost. So she had so much to their attack, so much depth. She takes a lot of pressure off Ali, which is really important for the Broncos. And yeah, I'm really excited to see how she's going. I've loved watching her play and I think she'll take her game to another level as well. Rue, what about your key matchup for this grand final? Well, Alana spoke about how do they stop the Broncos middle. They need to stop those front rowers. So yep. my big matchup here is Samima Taufa and Millie Boyle, New South Wales and Australian teammates. Not much difference in, uh, in age, but Samima sat out last game as did Hannah Southwell. So two very strong middles for the Roosters sat out and they both need to be able to shut down the second phase play that the Broncos produce. And that's off the back of Millie Boyle's running and obviously her middle defence is really strong as well, but also Chelsea Lenarduzzi. So her, uh, Mima and uh, Philomena, Hanissi, need to really shut down that middle. And obviously having Hannah back there defensively is going to add a lot of starch to their middle. Mm. So. That is one way that I think the Roosters can really stop that roll forward that the Broncos get, which then provides such a good platform for Brigginshaw and Aiken and McGregor to play off the back of. And that second phase play with Tamika Upton shooting through the middle off her front rowers offload She's so just scary. breaks them down. Like it yeah. breaks down defence too easily. So they really need to shut them down, ensure that they don't get those offloads and just get up in their faces. Well, on Sunday, we're also going to be seeing the RLPA Players Champion Award announced and we can actually announce who the five finalists are for the NRLW. So here we have here Ali Brigginshaw, Ivania Polite, Hannah Southwell and Zahara Tamara, Tamika Upton as well. And uh, we are lucky enough to be joined by one of the finalists. Ivania Polite joins us now via Zoom. Ivania, thanks for your time. How does it feel to be nominated? Yeah, I'm really humbled. I didn't expect this at all. So it was a massive shock, but I'm truly grateful. Hey, Vani, we know that the voting system is a little bit different from the men. So can you tell us how it worked? How, who did you get to vote for? And just run us through that process, please. Yeah, so after the games, we received a text message um, to vote and it was a 3 two, one system. And we just went online and um, they took out our teammates. So we could only vote for players from the three other teams. Ivania, congratulations on your nomination. And look, you've come from a, a very professional Rugby Sevens uh, background. How did you enjoy your experience with the Warriors and in Rugby League? Yeah, I really loved it. Um, being part of the Warriors team was something that I really wanted from the start. And being able to experience the culture that the New Zealand girls brought over was something that I'm truly grateful I got to experience as a professional athlete, but my overall experience playing rugby league, I absolutely love that. Um, I've definitely got a newfound love for the game. Now, a question without notice. Can we ask who you voted for? You 3-2-1? <laughs> Is that too cheeky? <laughs> Um, I'll say my 3 two, one definitely went to some girls that are nominated in the top five here. Yeah. <laughs> that was a smart well answer. Good answer, good answer, well hey, done. How, um, how different did you find from your background in rugby to coming across the NRLW? How different did you find the game? Honestly, it wasn't too different. The only thing that I found the hardest thing was um, the set plays that they had in league and obviously we don't have that space that we normally do in sevens but everything that we knew we called in sevens they just called it something different so just being able to get on the same page with the rest of the girls with the names and the calls. Hey Vani who was the toughest player that you came up against? Um, I'm probably going to have to say Yaz um, against the centre centre. Um, she was definitely the toughest but we obviously we're in the Sevens program together and she's always been a really mongrel person and she loves to deal. Um, <laughs> so that was a challenge that I love to exploit. Now that try on the weekend that Elia scored, that both of you set up, you were both, it was off a midfield scrum and just the two of you in an entire half of the field. It was obviously a set play, but what were you thinking going into that? Did you know that you were going to get her over the line? 
um, yeah, I didn't know because obviously I respect Jess Serge so highly and she's achieved a lot in the game. Um, and initially they set up with a 2-2, so we only had a man-on-man -man situation. So I knew that the opportunity was there to set Elia up for a try. And then last minute they put one other defender there. So I wasn't really backing my chances. But once Elia crossed over, I knew we'd done a great job. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time and congratulations again on the nomination and good luck for uh, the award. It will be announced on Sunday during our grand final coverage. All right, we're going to get a tip from each of you. Who do you think will take out the uh, Players' Champion Award? Oh, I think Tamika Upton, actually. Mm. She's just been incredible. I thought within... Ali Brigginshaw definitely deserved to win Dally M, so I, I also don't put it past Ali. I'd, I'd be more than happy if she got it as well, but... Tamika Upton deserves some form of accolades and if it's from the players, that's just such a highly regarded thing. So I think she'd be also, if I was a player voting, I would not want to play against her. Like, you, you never know where she's going to be, where she's going to pop up. She's so dangerous. So if I was a player, I'd definitely um, pick Tamika. Ru, who's your winner and why? I think if Hannah Southwell had played that last game, I would have tipped Hannah mm -hmm. to win Players' Champion. Uh, but I'm also going with Tamika Upton for those reasons. I think she's... In her first full season of NRLW, she has been absolutely fantastic out the back. So, yeah, I think if, if we'd seen Hannah take the field in that uh, game against the Broncos, I think she'd definitely give, a, give Tamika a push for that Players' Champion. Mm. Well, we will have to wait and mm, see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you for joining us here on the NRLW show. Don't forget, all the grand final action is at live on Nine from midday on Sunday.